My name's Angela and I'm a visually impaired designer. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Today's a special day because it's Aniridia Day. Well, when you see this video, it will have been yesterday. Aniridia is a special day to raise awareness and help others understand more about the rare eye condition, Aniridia. As a lot of you know, I have Aniridia personally, and so I'm happy to do a video to raise more awareness about it. So to quickly explain what aniridia is, aniridia is an eye condition where you don't have irises in your eye and it can also cause a lot of other complications like nystagmus where your eyes shake back and forth or I also have a lazy eye. A lot of people who have aniridia also get cataracts and glaucoma and several other different eye conditions that come along with it. Aniridia is a type of eye condition that people are born with. It can be genetic or it can also just happen to someone, depending on which type of aniridia someone has. I was born with my aniridia and I have sporadic aniridia, which means I don't have full aniridia, just partial. And so I have some iris on my eye but my pupils are always really enlarged. So I always like to explain it to people when it's like you go to the eye doctor and you get your eyes dilated really large. My eyes are like that all the time where there's a lot of light getting into my eyes and there's no way to really control it. A way I like to explain it to people also is that your eyes are like a camera. So the lens of a camera can be compared to the pupils of your eyes and then the shutter is similar to your iris where it helps control how much light or exposure is being put into a certain picture when you're taking it. The iris of your eye controls how much light gets into your eye. So if you don't have your iris, then it can be hard for your eye to know how much light to be letting in. Because of my aniridia, my eyes look unique. So this eye is more severe when it comes to the aniridia and you can't see any color for my iris because it's gone. And so it just looks like it's a really dark brown or a black. It's just my pupil. In my other eye, you can see a little bit of a iris and it's a darker brown color, but it isn't very big. Now this correlates to how my vision is. My eye that has more aniridia in it, I have poorer vision with that eye. And I do most of my seeing with my eye that actually has an iris. So typically when someone who has aniridia is asked what color their eyes are, it can be a little tricky. We don't have the typical blue or brown or hazel eyes. A lot of us will have to say like black or dark or we don't really have color in our eyes. So it just depends on the person. And for me, it also depends on the lighting and how you look at it. Sometimes they look even like a dark blue. All right, so for aniridia day, everyone is posting what their aniridia aids are. So I'll tell you about my top five aids that I use to help me with my disability of aniridia. All right, so the first aid that I use that I wanna tell you about is sunglasses. Sunglasses are super important because of how I explained how so much light is getting into my eyes. So I pretty much always, always have sunglasses on when I'm outside regardless of it's sunny or cloudy. I just finished graduate school in Seattle, Washington, and before I moved there, everyone was trying to warn me that the cloudy days could get hard and that the gloominess might be depressing and it might be hard on my mental health. But when I got there, they didn't realize that the cloudy days were actually really nice for my eyes and it really just helped overall. So I pretty much have a pair of sunglasses everywhere you could find them. I keep them everywhere so that if I ever forget to bring them, I already have them on hand. So that would include in the car, in every purse that I own. When it's cold in the winter, I keep them in my coat or I keep them in a jacket. I'll try to keep some in a backpack. I actually have a pair at my friend's house who I spend a lot of time with. I keep a pair at work. So if I need one while I'm at work and I forgot them, then I can have them there. I just have lots of pairs of sunglasses and it seems like I'm always losing them because they're just so easy to lose, but because I have so many, I can usually at least find one pair. I also don't think you should be surprised if you find me wearing sunglasses when I'm inside sometimes. If it's a really sunny day and there's lots of big windows and I can't control how much light is in a room, say I'm in a big group of people and so I can't just be like, can we close the blinds please just for me? then sometimes I'll wear sunglasses. 
but I typically don't wear sunglasses inside because especially right now working at home I can really control how much light is getting into my home so I'll close the blinds if my eyes are being bothered or I'll dim the light a little bit or find other ways which is really nice to be able to control my own environment. The second aid that I want to talk about is hats. So I say the floppier the better because more area, the farther it sticks out for me, the more shade I get from the hat. And this is a, a recent thing that I've kind of discovered that is really helpful for me. I used to just do sunglasses and then I realized that hats and glasses really can be a great combination because it creates this little shade. And so I think I want to become a hat person and really gather a lot of different hats and pretty much wear hats all the time, especially right now when it's the summer and it's so sunny outside. Because I really do enjoy being outside, but a lot of the times I avoid going outside because of the sun. Now, another tip I have with wearing hats is to wear more of a style of hat that's like a baseball cap. So this is more like a type of hat that is acceptable, I guess, to wear inside. And so I'll wear this type of hat recently to like Walmart or Costco or whatever grocery store I'm going to because for me the lights in the stores are so so bright it really hurts my eyes when I'm inside sometimes it hurts even more than when I'm outside so for a while I was really embarrassed because I was wearing sunglasses inside and I kept telling myself well it's okay to wear sunglasses inside because I can't handle the light and you know I really shouldn't worry about what people are saying but then I was like why am I not wearing more of a baseball cap style hat inside which is a normal thing for people to wear and then it's also helping me with blocking the light. The next aid that I use that's super helpful and I use a lot is the iPhone. So I use a lot of the different accessibility things that they have on their iPhone and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about a couple of the features that I really like on there as well. All right, the first feature that I wanna show you on my iPhone that I use a ton is a feature where it's set up in accessibilities. If I tap on anything that's small, so right here you can see I have 40% battery. I also can tap on the time and I use that one a lot. It will tell me because that right there up in the top bar is really hard for me to see. So let's go into the system preferences and talk a little bit about the accessibility options that are in here. So you can turn on voiceover. A lot of people who are blind use that because they can't see the screen at all and so they can tap around, but I don't use that feature. I have zoom on so that I can make anything that I want to zoomed in further. There's a magnifier and you can decide what size of text you want. You can make it larger, you can make it bolder, reduce the transparency, which I have that setting on because that helps a lot with the contrast of being able to see with complicated backgrounds. And there's a couple of other settings in there that I haven't turned on. Another iPhone feature that I really like to use is Siri. So she can help me do a lot of things. So she helps me with a lot of things that I don't necessarily need to rely on my eyes for. Hey Siri, what time is it? It's 9.43 p.m. Hey Siri, set an alarm for 8 a.m. Okay, your 8 a.m. alarm is on. And so I like to use Siri a lot for like making notes, setting reminders, making phone calls, texting, all these sorts of things. And then this just restricts, like I said, how much time I need to use my eyes. Now I want to show you one last feature on my iPhone. I have it set up where I can triple click on my home button, I can do either magnifier, voiceover, or zoom. And so a feature I really like to use on my phone is the magnifier. So if I have something like this packet, this is for ranch dressing, and if I wanted to be able to read the instructions on the back here, I can't quite see this with my own eyes, so I will use this zoom feature that's on my phone to get in here, and now I can read that it says there's a recipe for ranch oyster crackers, there's also some directions down here and a bowl combined with a cup of milk and the rest of the instructions for it. And this is the type of thing I can't really see with my bare eyes. So it's really nice to be able to have this feature on the iPhone where I can read the instructions and be able to do things that I can't normally do. The next aid that I want to tell you about 
is Sing AI. It's an app that was created by Microsoft and it helps you do a lot of different things. So I'll go ahead and show you around the app and how I like to use it now. So when you get into this app, there's multiple things that you can do and it really helps me do several things. Short text here is one of the ones that I use a lot. So say I want to read this packaging. Adult directions. Oyster crackers one. 12 Oz. PKG great value. Salad and. Teat value ranch salad dressing and one. Unprepared. Optional together. NCH baking pan. Bake it for G every five minutes. Visible or there's document. 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 And so she'll have me scan Bottom this document. Hold steady. Processing. And so it takes a picture and then it will create it into readable text and you'll have the option to either read it with picking your size of font you want here so you can increase it or decrease it to whatever you think is helpful or you can play it as audio. Font family, Arial, font size, 12 points, autothety, to enrollment in the plan UULA, die your own within M. Days be you are eligible to come. So other than the short text and document settings in here, there's a couple of other features that are super cool. You can scan product. a product, so you can scan the barcode and it will tell you more information about it. And then there's a person one, so you can register people's faces in here. And then you can scan their face and it will help you recognize who a person is if you can't see who people are. There's a currency one. You can scan a dollar bill and it will tell you which type of currency it is. You can scan a scene. So it'll take a picture of the scene in front of you and it will tell you kind of what it interprets. The last aid as a designer I use very frequently. It's my laptop. So I have also an Apple laptop and I want to show you a couple of accessibility things that I use that are slightly different on a desktop versus a mobile device. This is super important for me as someone who's visually impaired and is a designer who's pretty much on the computer all the time. This really makes it so that I can do my work. So let's take a look at my laptop and some of the features that I use. Alright, so let's go ahead and open System Preferences and look at the Accessibility tab. In here we can do similar things to my phone like use voiceover and zoom features that will help me zoom in on anything on the page. I can also change the size of my cursor and this is really helpful because I can lose my cursor quite easily. I can also use a feature called diction and this will make it so that I can speak what I want to type instead of having to use my eyes to type. I'll just say what I want to type and then I'll proofread it after. In the next couple of weeks, I have a video coming out about my new office desk setup. I'm super excited to share it so that you can see what I do as someone who's visually impaired to make it easier for me to work as a designer. Well, that's the five A's that I use the most frequently to help me with my visual impairment. I hope you found this video helpful and let me know in the comments below what types of aids you use to help you throughout your day. Well, that's everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you stuck it all the way through. I really appreciate your support. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the notification bell so you can see some exciting videos that I have coming out soon. I hope you all have a great day. Bye!